Flow cytometry is a technique used to detect and measure physical and chemical characteristics of a population of cells or particles. A sample containing cells or particles is suspended in a fluid and injected into the flow cytometer instrument. The sample is focused to ideally flow one cell at a time through a laser beam and the light scattered is characteristic to the cells and their components. Cells are often labeled with fluorescent markers so that light is first absorbed and then emitted in a band of wavelengths. Tens of thousands of cells can be quickly examined and the data gathered are processed by a computer. Flow cytometry is routinely used in basic research, clinical practice, and clinical trials. Uses for flow cytometry include Cell counting Cell sorting Determining cell characteristics and function Detecting microorganisms Biomarker detection Protein engineering detection Diagnosis of health disorders such as blood cancers A flow cytometry analyzer is an instrument that provides quantifiable data from a sample. Other instruments using flow cytometry include cell sorters which physically separate and thereby purify cells of interest, based on their optical properties. History The first impedance-based flow cytometry device, using the Coulter principle, was disclosed in U.S. Patent 2,656,508, issued in 1953, to Wallace H. Coulter. Mac Fulweiler was the inventor of the forerunner to today's flow cytometers, particularly the cell sorter. Fulweiler developed this in 1965 with his publication in Science. The first fluorescence-based flow cytometry device ICP was developed in 1968 by Wolfgang Goad from the University of Munster, filed for patent on 18 December 1968 and first commercialized in 1968–69 by German developer and manufacturer Partec through Verwehr AG in Göttingen. At that time, absorption methods were still widely favored by other scientists over fluorescence methods. Soon after, flow cytometry instruments were developed, including the cytofluorograph (1971) from Biophysics Systems Inc. (later Ortho Diagnostics), the PAR 8000 (1973) from Partec, the first FACS (fluorescence activated cell sorting) instrument from Becton Dickinson (1974), the ICP 22 (1975) from Partec, Fourier, and the EPICS from Coulter (1977–78). The first label free high frequency impedance flow cytometer based on a patented microfluidic lab on chip Ampha Z30 was introduced by Amphases 2012 Topic <laughs> name of the technology The original name of the fluorescence based flow cytometry technology was pulse cytophotometry German, Impulszitophotometry, based on the first patent application on fluorescence-based flow cytometry. At the Fifth American Engineering Foundation Conference on Automated Cytology in Pensacola, Florida, in 1976 – eight years after the introduction of the first fluorescence-based flow cytometer 1968, it was agreed to commonly use the name, flow cytometry, a term that quickly became popular. Topic. Flow cytometers Modern flow cytometers are able to analyze many thousand particles per second, in real time, and, if configured as cell sorters, can actively separate and isolate particles with specified optical properties at similar rates. A flow cytometer is similar to a microscope, except that, instead of producing an image of the cell, flow cytometry offers high-throughput, automated quantification of specified optical parameters on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. To analyze solid tissues, a single cell suspension must first be prepared. A flow cytometer has five main components, a flow cell, a measuring system, a detector, an amplification system, and a computer for analysis of the signals. The flow cell has a liquid stream sheath fluid, which carries and aligns the cells so that they pass single file through the light beam for sensing. 
A measuring system commonly use measurement of impedance, or conductivity, and optical systems, lamps mercury, xenon, high-power water-cooled lasers argon, krypton, dye laser, low-power air-cooled lasers argon, 488 nanometers, red henne, 633 nanometers, green henne, HECD, UV, diode lasers blue, green, red, violet, resulting in light signals. The detector and analog to digital conversion ADC system converts analog measurements of forward scattered light FSC and side scattered light SSC as well as dye specific fluorescence signals into digital signals that can be processed by a computer. The amplification system can be linear or logarithmic. The process of collecting data from samples using the flow cytometer is termed acquisition. Acquisition is mediated by a computer physically connected to the flow cytometer, and the software which handles the digital interface with the cytometer. The software is capable of adjusting parameters e.g., voltage, compensation for the sample being tested, and also assists in displaying initial sample information while acquiring sample data to ensure that parameters are set correctly. Early flow cytometers were, in general, experimental devices, but technological advances have enabled widespread applications for use in a variety of both clinical and research purposes. Due to these developments, a considerable market for instrumentation, analysis software, as well as the reagents used in acquisition such as fluorescently labeled antibodies has developed. Modern instruments usually have multiple lasers and fluorescence detectors. The current record for a commercial instrument is 10 lasers and 30 fluorescence detectors. Increasing the number of lasers and detectors allows for multiple antibody labeling, and can more precisely identify a target population by their phenotypic markers. Certain instruments can even take digital images of individual cells, allowing for the analysis of fluorescent signal location within or on the surface of cells. Topic. Hardware Topic. Fluidic system of a flow cytometer Cells must pass uniformly through the center of focused laser beams to accurately measure optical properties of cells in any flow cytometer. The purpose of the fluidic system is to move the cells one by one through the laser's beam and throughout the instrument. Fluidics in a flow cytometer with cell sorting capabilities also use the stream to carry sorted cells into collection tubes or wells. Topic: <inaudible> Hydrodynamic focusing. For precise positioning of cells in a liquid jet, the hydrodynamic focusing technique is used in most cytometers. The cells in suspension enter into the instrument enclosed by an outer sheath fluid. The sample core is maintained in the center of the sheath fluid. The sample input rate or how fast the cells flow through to the laser interrogation can be controlled by the pressure of the sheath fluid on the sample core. Under optimal conditions there is no mixing of the central fluid stream and the sheath fluid. Topic. Acoustic assisted hydrodynamic focusing Acoustic focusing technology is used in some flow cytometers to support hydrodynamic focusing. Acoustic waves greater than 2 MHz pre-focus the sample before introduction to sheath fluid. The pre-focused sample is then injected into the hydrodynamic core and flowed through the instrument. This may help with increasing data accuracy under high sample input rates. Topic. Optics and electronics Topic. Optical filters Light emitted from fluorophores are in a spectrum of wavelengths and combining multiple fluorophores may cause overlap. To add specificity, optical filters and dichroic mirrors are used to filter and move light to the detectors such as photomultiplier tubes PMTs, or avalanche photodiodes APD. Optical filters are designed as band-pass long-pass or short-pass filters. Most flow cytometers use dichroic mirrors and band-pass filters to select specific bands of the optical spectrum. Topic. 
prisms, gratings, and spectral flow cytometry. Spectral flow cytometry uses prisms or gratings to disperse the emitted light of a marker across a detector array. This allows for the full spectra from each particle to be measured. The measured spectra from single cells are subsequently unmixed by using reference spectra of all used dyes and the autofluorescence spectrum. This may allow for a wider panel design and the application of new biological markers. Topic. Imaging flow cytometry Imaging flow cytometry IFC, captures multi-channel images of cells. Detectors used in imaging platforms can be equipped with charge-coupled device CCD, or complementary metal oxide semiconductor CMOS, to capture images of individual cells. Topic. Data analysis Topic. Compensation Each fluorochrome has a broad fluorescence spectrum. When more than one fluorochrome is used, the overlap between fluorochromes can occur. This situation is called spectrum overlap. This situation needs to be overcome. For example, the emission spectrum for FITC and PE is that the light emitted by the fluorescine overlaps the same wavelength as it passes through the filter used for PE. This spectral overlap is corrected by removing a portion of the FITC signal from the PE signals or vice versa. This process is called color compensation, which calculates a fluorochrome as a percentage to measure itself. Compensation is the mathematical process by which we correct multiparameter flow cytometric data for spectral overlap. This overlap, or spillover, results from the use of fluorescent dyes that are measurable in more than one detector. This spillover is correlated by a constant known as the spillover coefficient. The process of compensation is a simple application of linear algebra, with the goal to correct for spillovers of all dyes into all detectors, such that on output the data are effectively normalized so that each parameter contains information from a single dye. In general, our ability to process data is most effective when the visualization of data is presented without unnecessary correlations. In general, when graphs of one or more parameters are displayed, it is to show that the other parameters do not contribute to the distribution shown. Especially when using the parameters which are more than double, this problem is more problematic. Up to now, no tools have been discovered to efficiently display multidimensional parameters. Compensation is very important to see the distinction between cells. Topic. Gating The data generated by flow cytometers can be plotted in a single dimension, to produce a histogram, or in two dimensional dot plots, or even in three dimensions. The regions on these plots can be sequentially separated, based on fluorescence intensity, by creating a series of subset extractions, termed gates. Specific gating protocols exist for diagnostic and clinical purposes especially in relation to hematology. Individual single cells are often distinguished from cell doublets or higher aggregates by their time of flight, denoted also as a pulse width, through the narrowly focused laser beam plots are often made on logarithmic scales. Because different fluorescent dyes emission spectra overlap, signals at the detectors have to be compensated electronically as well as computationally. Data accumulated using the flow cytometer can be analyzed using software. Once the data is collected, there is no need to stay connected to the flow cytometer and analysis is most often performed on a separate computer. This is especially necessary in core facilities where usage of these machines is in high demand. Topic. Computational analysis Recent progress on automated population identification using computational methods has offered an alternative to traditional gating strategies. Automated identification systems could potentially help findings of rare and hidden populations. Representative automated methods include Flock in Immunology Database and Analysis Portal, Import, SAMSpectral and FlowClust in Bioconductor, and Flame in Genopattern. 
T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding TSNE, is an algorithm designed to perform dimensionality reduction to allow visualization of complex multi-dimensional data in a two-dimensional map. Collaborative efforts have resulted in an open project called FlowCap, flow cytometry, critical assessment of population identification methods, to provide an objective way to compare and evaluate the flow cytometry data clustering methods, and also to establish guidance about appropriate use and application of these methods. Topic. FMO controls Fluorescence minus 1 FMO controls are important for data interpretation when building multi-color panels, in which a cell is stained with multiple fluorochromes simultaneously. FMO controls provide a measure of fluorescence spillover in a given channel and allow for compensation. To generate a FMO control, a sample is stained with all the fluorochromes except the one that is being tested, meaning if you are using four different fluorochromes your FMO control must contain only three of them example, fluorochromes, A, B, C, D, FMOs, A, B, C, underscore, A, B, underscore, D, A, underscore, C, D, underscore, B, C, D. Topic. Cell sorting by flow cytometry Cell sorting is a method to purify cell populations based on the presence or absence of specific physical characteristics. In flow cytometers with sorting capabilities, the instrument detects cells using parameters including cell size, morphology, and protein expression, and then droplet technology to sort cells and recover the subsets for post experimental use. The first prototype sorter was built at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in 1965 by physicist Mac J. Fulweiler by joining a Coulter volume sensor with the newly invented inkjet printer. Live cell cell sorter or fluorescence activated cell sorter FACS asterisk was generated by Len Herzenberg, who subsequently won the Kyoto Prize in 2006 for his seminal work. Asterisk the acronym FACS is trademarked and owned by BD Biosciences Immunocytometry Systems, a division of Becton Dickinson, which licensed Stanford's patents. Flow cytometry cell sorters have a collection system unlike flow cytometry analyzers. The collection process starts when a sample is injected into a stream of sheath fluid that passes through the flow cell and laser intercepts. The stream then carries the cell through a vibrating nozzle. The disturbance in the stream causes it to break into a droplet containing ideally one cell. An electrical charging ring is placed just at the point where the stream breaks into droplets. A charge is placed on the ring based immediately prior to fluorescence intensity being measured, and the opposite charge is trapped on the droplet as it breaks from the stream. The charged droplets then fall through an electrostatic deflection system that diverts droplets into containers based upon their charge. In some systems, the charge is applied directly to the stream, and the droplet breaking off retains charge of the same sign as the stream. The stream is then returned to neutral after the droplet breaks off. If collected under sterile conditions, these cells can be further cultured, manipulated, and studied. Topic. Labels Flow cytometry uses the light properties scattered from cells or particles for identification or quantitative measurement of physical properties. Labels, dyes, and stains can be used for multi-parametric analysis understand more properties about a cell. Immunophenotyping is the analysis of heterogeneous populations of cells using labeled antibodies and other fluorophore containing reagents such as dyes and stains. Topic: <laughs> Fluorescent labels. A wide range of fluorophores can be used as labels in flow cytometry. Fluorophores or simply fluors are typically attached to an antibody that recognizes a target feature on or in the cell. They may also be attached to a chemical entity with affinity for the cell membrane or another cellular structure. Each fluorophore has a characteristic peak excitation and emission wavelength, and the emission spectra often overlap. Consequently, the combination of labels which can be used depends on the wavelength of the lamps or lasers used to excite the fluorochromes and on the detectors available. 
A maximum number of distinguishable fluorescent labels is thought to be 17 or 18, and this level of complexity necessitates laborious optimization to limit artifacts, as well as complex deconvolution algorithms to separate overlapping spectra. Flow cytometry uses fluorescence as a quantitative tool. The utmost sensitivity of flow cytometry is unmatched by other fluorescent detection platforms such as confocal microscopy. Absolute fluorescence sensitivity is generally lower in confocal microscopy because out-of-focus signals are rejected by the confocal optical system and because the image is built up serially from individual measurements at every location across the cell, reducing the amount of time available to collect signal. Topic. Quantum dots Quantum dots are sometimes used in place of traditional fluorophores because of their narrower emission peaks. Topic. Isotope labeling Mass cytometry overcomes the fluorescent labeling limit by utilizing lanthanide isotopes attached to antibodies. This method could theoretically allow the use of 40 to 60 distinguishable labels and has been demonstrated for 30 labels. Mass cytometry is fundamentally different from flow cytometry. Cells are introduced into a plasma, ionized, and associated isotopes are quantified via time of flight mass spectrometry. Although this method permits the use of a large number of labels, it currently has lower throughput capacity than flow cytometry. It also destroys the analyzed cells, precluding their recovery by sorting. Topic. Cytometric bead array In addition to the ability to label and identify individual cells via fluorescent antibodies, cellular products such as cytokines, proteins, and other factors may be measured as well. Similar to ELISA sandwich assays, cytometric bead array CBA assays use multiple bead populations typically differentiated by size and different levels of fluorescence intensity to distinguish multiple analytes in a single assay. The amount of the analyte captured is detected via a biotinylated antibody against a secondary epitope of the protein, followed by a streptavidin R for coerithrin treatment. The fluorescent intensity of R for coerithrin on the beads is quantified on a flow cytometer equipped with a 488 nm excitation source. Concentrations of a protein of interest in the samples can be obtained by comparing the fluorescent signals to those of a standard curve generated from a serial dilution of a known concentration of the analyte. Commonly also referred to as cytokine bead array CBA. Topic. Impedance flow cytometry Impedance-based single-cell analysis systems are commonly known as Coulter counters. They represent a well-established method for counting and sizing virtually any kind of cells and particles. The label-free technology has recently been enhanced by a lab-on-a-chip based approach and by applying high frequency alternating current ac in the radio frequency range from 100 kHz to 30 MHz instead of a static direct current dc or low frequency ac field this patented technology allows a highly accurate cell analysis and provides additional information like membrane capacitance and viability the relatively small size and robustness allow battery powered on-site use in the field Topic. Measurable parameters Apoptosis, quantification, measurement of DNA degradation, mitochondrial membrane potential, permeability changes, caspases activity Cell adherence, for instance, pathogen host cell adherence Cell pigments such as chlorophyll or phacoerythrin Cell surface antigens, cluster of differentiation CD, markers Cell viability Circulating tumor cells, isolation and purification Characterizing multidrug resistance MDR, in cancer cells Chromosome analysis and sorting, love reconstruction, chromosome paint DNA copy number variation by flow fish or backs on beads technology Enzymatic activity Glutathione Intracellular antigens, various cytokines, secondary mediators, etc. 
membrane fluidity monitoring electropermeabilization of cells nuclear antigens oxidative burst pH intracellular ionized calcium magnesium membrane potential protein expression and localization protein modifications phosphoproteins scattering of light can be used to measure volume by forward scatter and morphological complexity by side scatter of cells or other particles even those that are nonfluorescent these are conventionally abbreviated as FSC and SSC respectively. Total DNA content, cell cycle analysis, cell kinetics, proliferation, ploidy, anaploidy, endoreduplication, etc. Total RNA content Transgenic products in vivo, particularly the green fluorescent protein or related fluorescent proteins Various combinations DNA, surface antigens, etc. Topic. Applications The technology has applications in a number of fields, including molecular biology, pathology, immunology, virology, plant biology and marine biology. It has broad application in medicine especially in transplantation, hematology, tumor immunology and chemotherapy, prenatal diagnosis, genetics and sperm sorting for sex preselection. Flow cytometry is widely applied to detect sperm cells abnormality associated with DNA fragmentation in male fertility assays. Also, it is extensively used in research for the detection of DNA damage, caspases cleavage and apoptosis. Photoacoustic flow cytometry is used in the study of multi-drug resistant bacteria most commonly MRSA to detect, differentiate, and quantify bacteria in the blood marked with dyed bacteriophages. In neuroscience, co-expression of cell surface and intracellular antigens can also be analyzed. In marine biology, the autofluorescent properties of photosynthetic plankton can be exploited by flow cytometry in order to characterize abundance and community structure. In microbiology, it can be used to screen and sort transposon mutant libraries constructed with a GFP encoding transposon TNMHA, or to assess viability. In protein engineering, flow cytometry is used in conjunction with yeast display and bacterial display to identify cell surface displayed protein variants with desired properties. The main advantages of flow cytometry over histology and IHC is the possibility to precisely measure the quantities of antigens and the possibility to stain each cell with multiple antibodies fluorophores. In current laboratories, around 10 antibodies can be bound to each cell. This is much less than mass cytometer where up to 40 can be currently measured, but at a higher price and a slower pace. Flow cytometry protocols used for research often needs validation because of the risk of antibody binding to FC receptors. CFSE assay Cell proliferation is the major function in the immune system. Often it is required to analyze the proliferative nature of the cells in order to make some conclusions. One such assay to determine the cell proliferation is the tracking dicarboxyfluorescein diacetate succinamidyl ester CFSE. It helps to monitor proliferative cells. This assay gives quantitative as well as qualitative data during time series experiments. This dye binds covalently with the long-lived molecules present inside the cell. When the cells divide, the molecules divide too and, the daughter cells possess half the dye than the parent population. This decrease in the intensity can be visualized by flow cytometry. In literature, this powerful technique of flow cytometry and CFSE has been used to find the efficiency of T-cells in killing the target cells in cancer such as leukemia. In order to visualize the target cell death, not only rapid but to monitor it for a longer period of time, scientists have used CFSE labeling with antibody staining of certain kinds of cells and fluorescently labeled microbeads. This also gave information regarding the proliferation of the target cells upon the treatment of certain cytokines. Topic. See also. Annexin A5 affinity assay, a test for cells undergoing apoptosis, often uses flow cytometry Cell cycle analysis Coulter counter Cytometry Dielectrophoresis
Flow cytometry standard Mass cytometry Microfluorimetry Viability assay Bibliography Flow Cytometry in Microbiology by David Lloyd ISBN 3-540-19796-6 Practical Flow Cytometry by Howard M. Shapiro. ISBN 0-471-41125-6 Flow Cytometry for Biotechnology by Larry A. Sklar. ISBN 0-19-515234-4 Handbook of Flow Cytometry Methods by J. Paul Robinson, et al. ISBN 0-471-59634-5 Current Protocols in Cytometry, Wiley Lisp Pub. ISSN 1934-9297 Flow Cytometry in Clinical Diagnosis, V4, Carey, McCoy, and Karen, eds. ASCP Press, 2007. ISBN 0-89189-5485 Essential Cytometry Methods by Z. Darzinkovich, J. P. Robinson and M. Roderer, Elsevier, Academic Press, 2010. ISBN 978-0-12-375045-7 Ormerod, M. G. Ed. 2000, Flow Cytometry. A Practical Approach. 3rd Edition. Oxford University Press, Oxford, UK. ISBN 0-19-963824-1 Ormerod, M. G. 1999, Flow Cytometry. 2nd Edition. Bios Scientific Publishers, Oxford. ISBN 1-85996-107-X Flow Cytometry. A Basic Introduction. Michael G. Ormerod, 2008. ISBN 978-0-9559812-0-3 Methods in Cell Biology, Cytometry, 4th edition, Vol. 75, by Z. Darzinkovich, M. Roderer and H. J. Tanker. Elsevier, Academic Press, 2004, ISBN 0-12-480283-4 Recent Advances in Cytometry, Part A, by Z. Darzinkovich et al., Methods in Cell Biology, Vol. 102, Elsevier, Academic Press, 2011. ISBN 978-0-12-374912-3 Recent Advances in Cytometry, Part B, by Z. Darzinkovich et al., Methods in Cell Biology, Vol. 103, Elsevier, Academic Press, 2011. ISBN 978-0-12-385493-3